Chris, recap number two, episode number two, Zach Buckeye. Let's jump right into it, man. What were your thoughts? <sighs> man, like I, I like I ended the conversation with yesterday. I truly think that Buck, Zach Buckeye and Buckeye Brownies could very well be a, a case study, like a business intro course case study. Yeah, what do you mean by that? Go so deeper. like you have these intro courses – you know, John Carroll, Baldwin Wallace, whatever college you go to, they, mm -hmm. they're just, they analyze a successful business and they say, you know, hey, this is the, who the entrepreneur was. This is what they did. You know, let's analyze what were the, you know, kind of like the SWOT analysis we did yesterday. What were the strengths? strengths. What were the weaknesses? Yep. What were the opportunities? Yep. What were the threats? Sure. Um, and then, hey, you know, 10 years from now, they're going to say, guys, in this business 101 course, you know, we have entrepreneurs that are looking at a bunch of different fields, right? Well, here's a, a guy, Buckeye Brownies, that he's making gourmet brownies. Right. Uh, let's let's analyze it because who knows? Maybe that gives someone a spark of um, a spark of motivation or gives them an idea. Yeah. yeah. Just kind of going off from that. Yeah. I so truly believe that. Yeah. Just listening, like hearing the story. You're reading up on the story and just kind of doing like a deep dive as far as like the SWOT analysis is essentially what you're saying. Like that'll be in a business course. I think Very so. Well could be. Yeah. I think so. Absolutely. 100%. What, think, what did you think? I mean, yeah. I mean, you have obviously you, cause you know him from your cousin, Mitch, who my cousin Mitchell grew up with him. They were very good friends. Yeah. We grew up in, um, Twinsburg. Uh, it was so Twinsburg Aurora blended into Twinsburg and Aurora blended into Aurora Shores. Okay. Mm -hmm. Like part of it, the kids would go to Twinsburg. Part of the uh, the other half, they'd go to Aurora, just like depending where you fall in, in there. Mm -hmm. Nonetheless, so he lived on the main street regatta trail of Aurora Shores. And my parents' first home was on Surfside Circle. We gave that house then to my aunt mm -hmm. um, when her and my cousin's dad split at the time, right? Her husband moved him over from South Euclid and in there. And they, and Mitch and him went to high school together, grew up. So I was around him here and there, mm -hmm. you know, and, mm -hmm. and saw... Um, kind of his growth as well, just like looking back over the years, obviously not paying attention to it when, you know, we're just little kids messing around outside. But, dude, he was always very um, – he loved sports. He was an only child, mm -hmm. loved sports, was always doing like the baseball clinics, the football clinics. He was a quarterback. He played second base in baseball, I'm pretty sure. He was a good athlete, dude. That's why, like, I was very intrigued to get into and allow him to express like how his competitive nature is still going. And that's mm -hmm. what's helping him drive his business and also be a bodybuilder. I mean, dude, I don't, you know, a lot of That's people tough. can put whatever stigma they want around bodybuilding. I don't care what it is you take. I don't care what it is your thoughts are. I don't care what it, dude, that is hard work. Mm -hmm. That is hard work. And that's just between you and you. And I love how he mentioned that too, is like, I always did the team sport. I love team sport, but now like I can control everything. Mm -hmm. I can control everything with me, my diet, my cardio, my weights, you know, the consumption of food, what he's putting in his mind, even in mm -hmm. prep as well, mm -hmm. how much sleep he's getting, water intake. I wonder when he starts b scaling his business even bigger when he, because we were talking a little bit about it. I, I wanted to go a little bit deeper into it. Um, we just didn't have enough time to talk about, you know, how, it, how exactly is he going to scale? And we had kind of the five-year out plan, mm -hmm. but I really wanted to understand more on his process for like hiring because we didn't, we didn't talk about that too, too much. Mm -hmm. Like what he looks for in an employee other than him saying, I just want to hire somebody like myself, exactly like myself. In reality, that's going to be pretty tough. So I want, I wonder what happens in the next couple of years. Cause he did mention he's a control freak. Mm -hmm. I wonder how he ends up, um, combating that, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, mo I would say most high level producers are in any industry are going to be somewhat of a control freak. Mm -hmm. You're a type A t individual, you know? Even if you could be a little disorganized, right? The clothes on the floor, this and that. It's like a uh, a chaotic organization, right? You know exactly where everything's at. Whatever type of person he is with that, I mean, I've I've been to his apartment before, his house before. Like he's a very organized type person. He's very type A. Mm -hmm. um, it, to me, I almost got the uh, the impression that like he's not in a rush to hire a lot of people. I think he's finding that with himself putting all the energy into it, now not being a civil engineer mm -hmm. and just focusing on this, that he has the opportunity to grow it to the capacity he wants to grow it at, and it is still growing. I think eventually- It's growing pretty well, oh, dude. Oh, man. Yeah, <laughs> seriously. And uh, um, I mean, to be averaging, on average, like 40 grand a month, he's dude, he'll get sales. to six. he'll get to seven figures within 12 oh, months. Easily, dude. I think. Easy. Two years, you're saying? I think, I think on his- I think in 2022 he'll be very close. I feel like to a yeah. million dollars, yeah. very close. Yeah, and absolutely. then 20, and then 2023 is I think. I mean, I don't That's know. That's wicked. I don't know. Like maybe he does. Maybe he hits a million dollars next year. 
Yeah, dude, maybe he does it by June. Who knows? I mean, you never know. You literally, and that's what's exciting about life, Chris, is like you never know when you're going to wake up and just like make that one call. Like, you know, I was having a conversation with somebody last night and they were saying, you know, when I was driving to this thing that I haven't done before, I felt a little nervous because I was, and I almost canceled on it because I didn't know what was going to come of it. And I was like, okay, well, how do you feel now? Yeah. I'm glad I went. Yeah. See, on that other side of that, there's something there of benefit. And even maybe you fell flat on your face, but that experience is still there. So mm-hmm. on the other side of just saying, you know what, I'm going to pick up the phone and call three real estate agents today. And if, if you know, two of the three tell me to F off, great. If one just lets me go to voicemail, it is what it is. Let me try again tomorrow. Hey, I had one great meaningful conversation. On the other end of that, you never know when it's going to catapult your business to, you know, great, you know, much bigger numbers. Yeah. Even for him at the end of the day, it's like, you never know what kind of conversation or connection he has, or somebody sees him and says, you know what, Zach Buckeye, I really freaking like you, man. Let me put you on. I have yeah. this, this is, you know what I'm saying? Boom, and I like your brownies. I'm, I'm connected <laughs> with QVC. Yeah. Get to my QVC. I mean, dude, that can make him a millionaire by a mm-hmm. million dollar in sales company by June, mm-hmm. you know, or he gets into Walmart. Yeah. Can you imagine that? He yeah. gets a contract with like a big retail place like that. That's and right. Dude, and then the sky's the limit. I mean, with yeah. e-commerce, I think it's just, he could just sell direct. You know what I mean, too? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He'll probably need, like, obviously, he said a bigger facility and everything. Mm-hmm. But he's, I mean, he even said, like, in his decisive um, action plan that he has in the next five years, yeah. dude, he'll, he'll blow yeah, it out he of will. the water. Um, one thing you brought up about what his process would be about hiring employees and how he kind of mentioned like, I, you know, if somebody's gonna work for me, I just want him to be like me. Mm-hmm. It, it made me think of a video that really resonated with me uh, from Gary V. Okay. And it was somebody saying like, something asking about, hey, do you expect your employees to have the same drive as you yeah, do? Yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, and he yeah. said, Abs-, you know, no. Gary V's like, yeah. fuck no. He's mm-hmm. like, absolutely not. He's like, yeah. I'm the little kid with the chip on the shoulder from who you know where the teacher said you're dumb you're dyslexic you you're not going to amount to anything Mm -hmm. and i want to own the jets Mm -hmm. he's like susie my you know my front desk receptionist just wants 45 to 50 grand a year and to be able to go on vacation once yeah you know one week out of the year with her kids i'm not there's no way i can i can allow myself to put that expectation on her Mm -hmm. i think that's why he's an awesome leader and that's honestly i would just like forward that video to zach or i think that's good um, for anybody listening to this who might be one day in the position where you are managing people mm-hmm. or you are you do aspire to do that, mm-hmm. you know, a business owner, um, I would just utilize that model. You can't expect that out of your employees. I think what is important and, you know, what a lot of companies do is they have the managers where – it's the one size fits all like, Hey, your production's low. You need to get your numbers up versus like sitting with them and realizing, Hey, let's pull out of you where it is. You're lacking. Let, let me help elevate you as an individual. Um, and I think even in his business, he can do that as well. I mean, he has, you know, he said he'd never plug somebody into social media because he loves that. But Mm -hmm. what if you find somebody who kills it at SEO and knows that way more can grow his following? Like you have to be willing to give that up and then to trust people that in that position, they can do work that they know how to do as well and do it well you know, Mm -hmm. and trust their work. Dude, one thing I love to kind of couple with that about him, about Zach, is when he was working as a project manager, he, you know, he he got his secret recipe, right, from his mom, Mm -hmm. (laughs) the secret formula, Um, and he ended up just perfecting it, and then it became a hobby, Mm -hmm. and then it became into something that he actually enjoyed, and then started making money off of it. Mm -hmm. I think that's a an amazing way to start your business. Like never do it from the money. And like you said, like some people don't aspire to have certain incentives. Some people, employees, like maybe they just want recognition, like a, Hey, thank you. Or maybe it's like a, you know, maybe it's not a pay raise. Maybe it's like, you know, a vacation or something. Maybe they really enjoy traveling and you give them a vacation. But for, for Zach, I think that, uh, him going into a hobby, starting off something that he really enjoys and loves, and then making money off of that, that's awesome. And I think that's going to carry over to when he does his hiring process. Is yeah. I think he is going to recognize that um, when yeah. he starts when he starts hiring more. Yeah, absolutely. It very it really is interesting, man. I like the fact that you highlight that it was a hobby for him. It also, it, it's just like in a dumb example. It reminds me of like the first, you know, like kernel of corn sitting next to the fire and all of a sudden the guy's sitting there and the heat makes it pop and you have popcorn. You're like, holy shit, I have popcorn. Like he's just like sitting there stuffing his face after a show trying to intake these calories. And all of a sudden people are like, hey man, can I try some? And they yeah. have some, they're like, dude, you should sell it. He does it, goes and hits 10K in sales a month. And he's like, holy shit, I got a business. Yeah. You know, you hear those stories about people where they just absolutely grind their life away to try and, 
you know, build a dream, this and that. Dude, and then you have those stories like him where it just fell in his lap. But he's also the type of person to, when life hands you lemons, he made the lemonade and he's making it and he's making a lot of it <laughs> and he's rolling, you know? Yeah. And dude, he has an awesome story. Absolutely awesome story. He hung around after. He was passing out brownies. Guys, seriously, if you're listening to this, like, go check out his website. These brownies mm-hmm. are top notch. Chris, mm-hmm. did you try one? I did. I forgot. I don't remember which one I the tried. Blonde, it was the, uh, they might have been, white, the, mar- uh, might the, have been the blonde. I the white chocolate chips on top, I think, or the maybe I don't know, dude. I took one bite and it melted in my mouth. It's good. <laughs> it it's was good. so good. It's good. And you can freeze them too, mm-hmm. and then bring them back out, like you know, a couple weeks later. Throw them in the microwave. They're still ready to go. Um, he says they'll deliver all over the country, and he has like a like a seven to ten day delivery time. They'll be fine, and then you just take them, throw them in the freezer in the yeah. fridge. Quite honestly, I've I I mean, again, I'm not a huge sweets guy. Yeah, but um, dude, like. That was amazing. It was yeah, really. Fr- yeah, I'm not good. joking. This isn't product placement or anything. Like no, seriously. it was actually very good. Yeah, and people laid <laughs> them up here. Yeah, we went. Past, you know, had a, a bunch of people come to the kitchen and and all that. So that's awesome. And uh, he's going to be in next Friday. Did you hear that? Hesh ordered some trays for the mastermind meeting. He's going to be in, and he's going to be oh, for uh, the real estate mastermind and the, meeting and the real estate open house, which we have he's next catering. Friday. He's catering, yeah. He's going to be out <laughs> here with some trays and some business cards and stuff like that. So yeah, I'm glad he was able to get himself plugged a little bit and. Uh, you know, make sure you guys keep up with him as well. He is on not only just with his fitness, but with the brownies as well. It's Buckeye Brownies mm-hmm. on Instagram. And then it's uh, Buckeye underscore fitness. Follow his fitness page. The guy is mer- very motivating. Up early. Mm-hmm. Especially, you got to follow him during his contest prep, dude. He's, he's a freak. He's just a freak. And that's what I love about Zach the most is, dude, he doesn't get wrapped up in any of the outside noise. He just mm-hmm. doesn't. He just, I love how he said too when he was at Akron, he's like, I was finally away from my parents and on my own, I realized there was a crowd that I can hang out with where like I wasn't going to be doing all the best things. Mm -hmm. And then I could gravitate towards the kids who were going to the gym and making a couple better decisions, you know, Mm -hmm. still being college kids, but like making some better decisions for themselves on a good path. And he's like, I just naturally gravitated there. And that's just kind of the person he's always been. Is that one piece of advice you take from like, if you had to say like after that, yeah, you know, like from Marcus, I've taken some things and mm-hmm. I've taken some things from you, and you know, I'm sure we'll continue to take pe- bits and pieces of advice throughout these, you know, through our journey on Elevate Cleveland podcast. But mm-hmm. what what did you take most from him that you think you're going to apply? Oh gosh, man, his discipline, his discipline to do like that small things. Mm-hmm. Which have big results. Mm-hmm. Is that is that what he said? I want to quote him. He gave him his air quotes. It was uh-huh. small actions yield big results. Sometimes Something the smallest the actions yield big results. Whatever it is. Yeah. Right. That that quote type around that area. What he was what he was saying. His discipline to just do the small things. Mm-hmm. I love posting on social media once a day. Mm-hmm. He'll do it. Mm-hmm. You know. I got to get up and hit my cardio. I got to drink my gallon of water. Now, obviously, he has a different goal with that. Um, you know, for his bodybuilding. But I would take that, Chris. I would take his execution of the small tasks that he knows over time build up to make and and yield great success. That's the long game. You know what I mean? If you want to stay in business a long time. Okay. Yeah, I think I it's you. I think a lot of people don't recognize those small cuz I feel like to be very successful you have to be a little crazy, like a little nuts. Gone to your craft. You know what I mean? Yeah, you have to be a little gone to your craft. Cuz if you're average and doing it, average people are doing like you're not going to get anywhere. So th- and Again, you know, with him, he's probably a little crazy. I mean, he did. He said he had no social life for like eight, nine months. Mm-hmm. Yeah, man, that's it's pretty. I mean, you're a recluse. You, you know won't I mean? find Zach Buckeye in the bar. You yeah, just won't. you won't find him out tonight. Mm-hmm. You just won't, dude. He's gonna be baking mm-hmm. and getting his holiday orders out. Like yesterday, Hash was like, "Oh, I think it's this Friday," and he's like, "Oh, that's no worry." He's like, "Oh, but you have Thanksgiving." I said that. You have, oh, but you have Thanksgiving. Don't worry about this Friday. He goes, that doesn't matter. He goes, I'll get it to you. Yeah. And he's like, oh, wait, never mind. It's next Friday the 3rd. And he's like, oh, okay, even better. Yeah. But he literally right away was like, don't worry. I'll bring him here. Mm-hmm. The kid's just a hustler, man. What about you, though? Tell me as we wrap up, Chris. I like, he did one, one thing that resonated with me, and he said, I think he said, this is my time. Like, when he's at the gym, it's, it's his time. Mm. So he doesn't, you know, he could foresee, like, his day. You know, he's got to respond, you know, there's complaints or mm-hmm. there's, you know, having to work on the business or there's social media, mm-hmm. but his time in the dr- gym is his tranquility. Yeah. And I think that's super important when it comes to business um, or e- anything like you could be doing, you know, research or, uh, you know, have a tough project. If you're a kid in college listening to this and you have a big test coming up, I think if you plug away too, too much, you're going to just, 
it's just too much of a um screws with your mind too much like a burnout you'll face yeah i don't like i don't like the bur- i don't like burnout as a terminology but along the same lines basically you just kind of lose you, you start to lose your your fatigue, you fatigue a little bit a little bit yeah. yeah i mean it's just too much what about burn off turns you off i just believe or that burn out i just i don't believe like in burnout i believe like you just kind of lose your focus mm-hmm. like you kind of you lose your why okay i don't because like if you like in wrestling burnout i never thought was like a good term to use because it, it just gives you more excuses not to like go to practices or wrestle tough it's more so just your lack of focus and your lack of understanding what your why is okay you know okay i'm with you um that's why i don't really like the the you'll know, burn yeah. out te- terminology okay um that makes sense but i like his tranquility when yeah. he's talking about listen i know i have a tough day ahead but listen this hour that i'm in the gym right now is me is my time yeah. Yeah. I love that. That's yeah. awesome. I think that's so, so integral when you're trying to build a business or whatever you're trying to do is just having your peace and quiet, just your own time to think. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And not even just because he's a bodybuilder. I mean, like truly in general, it having a fitness regiment, like we mentioned in the beginning yeah. of the podcast is so important. But it could be you know? anything. Like you could, I don't know, wake up early and go on an hour walk, you know, a, yeah. an hour walk in the morning just to like that time right there. Exactly. Yeah, it does. It really does. I think, you know, people right away, they get up and I know, I think we just got to the 15 minute mark. So we'll mm-hmm. wrap up here, but, uh, people right away think, Oh, let me get up and go and answer. Let me go answer my emails right away. Let me go answer my text messages. Let me check social, social media. Yeah, just wait, just wait, dude, give it one hour because now you're letting all of that stuff mm-hmm. dictate how you go. The, mm-hmm. appra- the email coming in saying the appraisal came short is now making your day which is just another day. Yeah. Shit. Yeah. Because you're allowing that to dictate your morning and you're carrying it into the day versus saying, okay, let me ground myself first. And then knowing whatever comes my way, I can now handle it because I've grounded myself in whatever my morning routine is. That's why morning Mm -hmm. routine Mm -hmm. is so vital. If you're gonna have a routine at any portion of the day, have it in the morning. Absolutely. So vital. So anyone watching or listening, I, my piece of advice to anybody watching or listening is give yourself an hour, whether it's, Mm-hmm. You know, we, we're in the morning, even if it's at night, just no phone, just be by yourself, just walk a little bit, go outside and walk. Or if it's too cold, just maybe just, I don't know, meditate if you want to, but just to like refresh everything, That's just right. so you don't, you don't have that burnout per se, or maybe you yeah. can get back to your, you know, why and you, yeah. your focus and everything. Yeah. And understand there will be ups and downs with it. You're not going to have lasting hundred percent energy every single day of the week. Right. Mm -hmm. Every day might look a little bit different. Have a plan where on the day where you feel on top of yourself and on top of the game and on top of the world Mm -hmm. where, you know, okay, I'm going to get done X, Y, Z, A, B, C. Some days it might just be X, Y, Z, dude, you got to get done. The Mm -hmm. ABC, the extra effort, it's not there. That's okay. Mm -hmm. You're going to have those Mm -hmm. times, but it's just being constant with the, with the um, specific actions that are, that you know, and that you have designated that are going to be the ones that are going to carry you forward out of that rut too, if that's what you go through. All right, man. Any last, uh, any last words? Have a happy Thanksgiving, man. It's all you our too, viewers. Bro. You By the time you hear it, it'll be happy Cyber Monday. Right? Happy <laughs> Cyber, Cyber Monday. Monday. Go shop, go shop till you drop online. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. Support the small businesses around shopping online. But no, seriously, man. As we're recording this, happy Thanksgiving to you, man. I've definitely been uh, very grateful for this year and us kind of growing our relationship together and starting this up here into our production crew and everything like that. So mm-hmm. that's all I got to say, Chris. How about you? That's it, man. Happy Thanksgiving, you and your family, everybody. Yep. And um, yeah, man, looking forward to the hol- Christmas, man. I freaking love Christmas. I, love it. I know you do. <laughs> I Every Friday it. has been like it for you soon, too. So <laughs> we'll be, uh, we will be airing, by the time you guys hear this, we will be airing again on Friday, 10 a.m. You want to tell them a little bit about who we have? Uh, by the time they listen to this, it'll be Friday the 3rd, December 3rd. Who, they, who are we going to be dropping with? We have we have your buddy with Blitz. Oh yeah, no, yeah, we have Matt Harris coming yes. up on Tuesday. Coming up, Matt Harris yep. owns a video production studio, Blitz Studios. Mm. He's been doing this. I, man, talk about passion. He's been doing this since he was like in high school. Yeah. Wow, that's awesome. Yeah. And then that'll air Friday. We shoot next Tuesday after Cyber Monday. That'll air Friday, December third. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We'll go from there, we'll and then the list continue go it continues going on and on. So, yeah, Chris, man. sign off, brother. Alrighty. Hey, everyone. Thanks for tuning in to this episode of the Elevate Cleveland podcast. Dominic, wrap it up for us. As Chris stated at the beginning of this podcast, we are licensed loan originators for the best mortgage company in the land. That is Liberty Home Mortgage. Guys, if you 
or anybody you know is looking to purchase or refinance a home, doesn't, doesn't matter if you've done this one, 10, or 100 times, call us, email us. The email is in the description below. Reach out to that email in the subject line. Put looking to purchase slash refinance a home. Whatever it is your goal is, Chris and I will reach out to you within 24 hours, and we look forward to helping you with whatever it is your specific home goal is. Thank you. Yeah.